assalamu alaikum everyone uh, this is the continuation of the previous lecture uh, in which we were talking about how to analyze a poem in exam today we are going to focus on uh, the rhyme scheme uh, rhyme scheme is basically how you find music and sound working in a poem um, it creates uh, it has two or three functions we are going to discuss about it it's basically a repetition of similar sounding words so we are basically focusing on sound words which sound similar occurring at the end of the lines in the poems or songs but this is not the only definition you can find words coming within the lines but that is another kind of rhyme scheme that we are going to be talking about the most common kind of rhyme scheme that we find in poem is the external rhyme scheme and it creates a certain symmetry within a poem and you have the same sounding words coming again and again and again at the end of the lines uh, which obviously adds a very pleasing effect uh, when you read the poem and it's also good for remembering them so it's it has a mnemonic um, function to it also so you can easily remember so that is one of the reason why you still remember your nursery rhymes because of the rhyme scheme that it has and also in uh, in olden days uh, even the, the formulas of physics and the different principles of biology and history they were written in rhyme so people could commit them to memory and they could remember them for a long period of time so uh, within rhyme scheme you have two types what is one is the external rhyme scheme and the other one is the internal rhyme scheme in the external rhyme scheme your focus is towards the end of the line so you would be rather uh, focusing here at the end uh, and you would be looking at the last words on which the line ends um, so here you are going to look at the words day play same and game and uh, the people who are writing poems initially they also make sure that they have the ending rhyme going for them um, so here obviously you have to see that day rhymes with play and same rhymes with game so there is an external regular rhyme scheme going on here in which the last words of both lines they rhyme together um, in external rhyme scheme you you can have alternate rhyme scheme also in which the first line would rhyme with the third line and the second line could rhyme with the fourth line there are stanzas who they in which all the four lines they rhyme together so you might have a rhyme scheme of a a a a in which all the four lines they rhyme uh, with the same word and then the next one is obviously the different types of rhyme schemes coming within the external rhyme scheme so we are st still looking at the end of the lines but there are different ways of looking at the masculine rhyme scheme they usually end with words which are single syllabic they are one syllabic so mouse and house just has one syllable so you don't have to stop between the word and then go on for example the words like acquainted or measles have two syllables so you have to uh, almost take a little breather in the center a little pause and then you continue but with the unisyllabic or one syllabic word you don't have to stop so mouse and house are one syllabic word uh, and masculine rhyme scheme is the rhyme scheme in which the last words they rhyme together but most of the time or almost all of the time these two words are monosyllabic so they are short words and usually this rhyme scheme is used to add emphasis in uh, where you want to make a point towards the end the other examples are the spree day play so uh, when you have lines ending on unisyllabic word uh, basically that uh, means that you are using a masculine rhyme scheme now in the feminine rhyme scheme you uh, if you look at the end of the lines they are ending on a multi-syllable word so these are longer words in which the emphasis is not there that much and you usually end it in a very gliding way so if you look here weasels and measles pleasure and measure fainted and acquainted you basically take a glide in the center we are still talking about the external rhyme scheme but there is a slight difference between the masculine and feminine rhyme scheme masculine uh, rhyme scheme is more rigid and uh, ending in a very abrupt way usually the words are hard sounding and in a feminine rhyme scheme the words ending uh, they are multisyllabic they can be two syllable or three syllabic word and there's a glide to it when you uh, speak it but obviously the main function of ending with rhymes is that to create a certain music um, in the poem the next one is internal rhyme scheme so the first one was external and now it is internal as the word suggests that we do not just look at the end of the lines 
so we might find words having the same sound coming in the middle and at the end or anywhere for that matter uh, within the lines so you have a more internal rhyme scheme going on here so you find it more in blank words where you you are not working with fixed stanzas and obviously here you have uh, an example so you can see the dreary and weary um, they are not the ending words they come in the middle dreary comes in the middle and weary at the end also here napping tapping rapping they are all rhyming words but not coming at the end uh, and then nearly and with gently they both rhyme together and then there are words like low door door more which are coming at the end so they are like external rhyming and these words which are coming in the middle um, they are called the internal rhyme scheme once upon a midnight dreary while i pondered weak and weary over many a quaint and curious volume of forgotten lore while i nodded nearly napping suddenly there came a tapping as of some one gently rapping rapping at my chamber door it's some visitor i muttered tapping at my chamber door only this and nothing more so when you read it um, it gives you a certain kind of music to your ear but the music does not just come at towards the end of the line it comes in the middle of the line also so this is called the internal rhyme scheme so uh, this is how you differentiate one rhyme scheme from another uh, there are other devices that comes within the rhyme uh, which creates melody and the most common one is alliteration alliteration is when words occurring together which have the same consonant sound so please remember that alliteration is related to consonant sounds um, you have assonance here which deals with more vowel sounds or vowel sounds attaching to a certain consonant but in alliteration basically we focus on consonant sounds so if you read this line we felt dreary and dismal in the darkness of the night deep into that darkness peering doubting dreaming dreams no mortal ever dared to dream before so this line is by edgar allan poe and uh, if you look at this line you have a lot of repetition of the sound d and r also or d r the blend of d r coming together so uh, it 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 gives it a very musical effect it gives it the melody and obviously mm, uh, the intention of the poet is uh, to uh, make you consciously aware of the sounds that he is creating so d is basically a very hard sounding word so when a line or a certain poem has more d attached to it so it means that uh, you are basically working with the sounds which are um, hard to pronounce and the theme might be uh very dreary or dismal for that matter the refrain is the other rhyme device that we uh, usually find in the poems and uh, here it means repetition of the same words phrases in the poem so you might have lines which are repeated or you might have phrases which are repeated so uh, this is different from uh, anaf anaphora anaphora usually comes at the beginning of the lines but a refrain can come anywhere within a poem so you might have two lines uh, which are repeatedly used here we have an example from the poem um uh, stopping by the woods in a uh, winter evening um uh, and um, the lines are the woods are lovely dark and deep but i have promises to keep and miles to go before i sleep and miles to go before i sleep so these two lines here are used as a refrain because they are exactly the same and they are being repeated sometimes you have a cycle poem in which you have the same line as the first line of the poem and the poem ends again with the same line so these that is also a refrain but under the heading of a cycle poem then you have anomatopoeia anomatopoeia means using sounds or words to create sounds sorry it it means to create sounds with words so it might have uh in the line you have i heard the ripple washing in the reeds and the wild water lapping on the crag so here lapping and ripple they are both words which are creating the sound of water uh, same can be twittering of the birds or you can say splashing of water he dashed around um you know he zipped through it it was buzzing around so all these sounds come under anomatopoeia then assonance assonance is more like alliteration but obviously here we are focusing more on the vowel sounds which are repeated but because vowels cannot come alone they have to be in a certain company of consonants so you have soft consonants which are working with vowels here if you read this line the light of the fire is a sight go slow over the road 
so in the first line the light of the fire is a sight you have a very pronounced a uh, very uh, significant sound of i repeating again and again and in the other line go slow over the road you have a very um, visible noticeable sound of o coming in this line so in the lines when you feel that the vowel sound is being repeated that comes under assonance and when you have a consonant sound being repeated that comes under alliteration so we need to stop here and uh, tomorrow we are going to work with a meter and stress pattern uh in the meantime i want you to apply these rules to the poems that you have at home um so when i'm talking about alliteration you need to go back to your poems and try to find examples of alliteration over there or refrain or onomatopoeia or assonance or you can look uh, over the internet for poems that you can uh critically analyze and this would come under stylistic analysis so just to repeat everything again rhyme scheme is there to give the poem a melodic effect it would give it a ple very pleasant sound number 2 is it would be easy to remember the poem because of the rhyme scheme and number 3 that it creates a certain symmetry which differentiates prose from verse uh, something that is very significantly different in prose from verse is that it ends with rhyming uh, words and it has a certain rhyme scheme to it so that is a differentiating uh, point between prose and poetry so focus on that and we are going to continue inshallah tomorrow